uh, gathering. So <laughs> we were at uh, one of the local restaurants here in Mackay, and um, for those people that don't know Dan, Dan's got a couple of farms, and also he's, he's right into his cattle classing and, his, and genetic breeding and things like that. He, he really likes to uh, push that sort of side of the, the cattle work. So, um, and for those people that don't know, Dan refers to a lot of his cattle as purple tags, and they're the good ones, they're the cream of the crop. You want the purple tags in your herd, and then he's got the green tags, which are the ones basically you want to get rid of them, send them to the works. You want to get rid of them. Now, I didn't know this at the time, but I was sort of wondering why Dan was sort of giving me a good look up and down. <laughs> and uh, a few key questions about family history and uh, other things sort of led me to believe I think he might have been classing me that night. <laughs> So I never did find out yet, am I a purple tag or a green tag? <laughs> well, I'm here, so I must be up there. <laughs> this is <it>. Now, uh... <laughs> you like green. Well, that's a bit there. Um, I'm just, yeah, as I said, they've done a lot for me. Um, spent a lot of time up the farm with, uh, when I've been up there with Erin and it's been really good. Um, so you know, they've, they've done a lot of, lot of things for us. They've um, you know, looked after us. They've given us this, this lovely celebration here that we have with you. And um, I think Dan was must have been um, that excited or that happy or, or hopeful to try to get me into the um, into the family that when it comes time after I uh, popped or, did, or tried to pop a question, I, I asked Dan for his um, approval to marry Erin. And later on that night, he actually proposed to Aaron uh, on my behalf. <laughs> so thank you, Dan. As, yeah. But with all the uh, funny moments aside and, uh, and the laughter aside as well, um, on a serious note and a thoughtful note, they have shown me a lot of love and uh, a lot of support and, and um, obviously acceptance for Aaron's um, hands. So I thank uh, Dan and Diane. Thank you. I know Erin's going to come up and say something about mum and dad as well, so um, just a little quick word on my uh, mother and father, Ray and Noreen, uh, two of the nicest people you'll ever meet. Uh, I mean, they've given me a great childhood, a great, a great family, a great life, and um, I've got so many great memories. I mean, you know, mum, mum, you're a lovely lady. She's pretty quiet, but uh, she protects us boys like a lioness. Yeah. So Erin, uh, you better do the right thing. <laughs> I'm sure you'd be right. Uh, and as for Ray, Ray's he's a proud, proud country gentleman. I mean, he's lived and done more than, than most of us here. And um, I've never met a man that has, has done every type of job and also seems to know a story that fits any occasion. And it doesn't matter whether we go to South Australia, up in the top end, anywhere, he'll always seem to find someone when we pull up that he knows, he knows their cousins and knows their family. So, um, and I suppose that sort of life is, uh, for some of you might know, he's, he's a very accomplished writer. Um, he can write a good song, and uh, a lot of people think that too, like Slim Dusty. He recorded many of Dad's songs, so um, I'm very proud of that. And Mum and Dad, they've, look, they've had a tough year this year, uh, you know, with illness. They've had a lot of excitement, ups and downs, a lot of change, and uh, they're sitting here in front of us, strong for all. So, uh, Mum, thanks, and Dad, thanks very much. And finally, uh, onto my toast, a little bit off the side. Um, before I start my toast, actually, I'd like to, to thank the readers at the church today. So, uh, to Pat, uh, to Danielle and Katrina, so thank you very much for reading today. And also for our drivers, Bevan and Shannon, gave up a couple of hours of pre dinner drinks, so thank you very much for being here. And uh, onto my toast, sorry, to our bridal party. I mean, we've got um, my brothers, Michael and Ethan. And uh, Aaron's bridesmaids, we've got Samantha and Celeste. I mean, they look fantastic. They've done a fantastic job today, and um, they've made our they've made our day very special. So um, just, I'd like everyone to charge their glasses. I'd like to propose a toast to the bridal party. Thank you very much, everyone.
Have a good one.
But before I conclude my speech, I have to let everyone in on the two nicknames our household has affectionately given Erin and Wes. For many years, we have all known Erin as Irby, although I can't explain why, it's just a nickname that came about one day. This nickname has evolved many times, often to Irv or Herb. One day, when we were all at the farm, Mum was once again worrying if everyone had enough to eat, and in her rush, asked if Wedge had been fed. <laughs> After a blank look came over everyone's faces, we all erupted into laughter, and from then on, they became Herb and Wedge. <laughs> so, Herb and Wedge, I would firstly like to congratulate you both on a wonderful day, and for all the hard work you put into planning the wedding. Living in Emerald away from the rest of the bridal table, you were probably without helpers on many occasions, but hopefully we have all made up for it today in some way. I am very proud to be a part of your bridal party and wish you both the best on your special day. And I'd like to wish you all the best in your future together as husband and wife. Thanks, Sam. I'd just like to... Mick, Rose, Michael. Uh, hello everyone, friends and family. Um, I'll just sort of start to start off by uh, saying some apologies from the people that couldn't be here tonight. Um, Mary Dyke uh, wishes Leslie and Erin a big congratulations and sorry that, that she couldn't make it tonight. Uh, Danny and Libby Robson also uh, send their congratulations. And Helen and Fred Sweeney send their apologies. Um, I actually got a text message from our cousin Jamie and Jamie who live in Tasmania who couldn't be here because they just had a uh, baby girl uh, just the other day. I'll just read out the text. Says, hi Wes and Aaron, I wish I could be there to share your special day with you. Wes, I remember growing up with this blonde-haired little boy. We always had to win at every running and where are we? Every running and swimming race that we did. A boy who would demand a rematch in the game of Monopoly if he did not win. <laughs> a competitive boy who has grown up to be a wonderful, caring man. A winner who has won himself a beautiful, smart and lovely woman, Erin. We all welcome you with open arms. Congratulations to you both. Have a beer for me, you both. Jamie, Jamie, Phoebe and Abby and Georgia Fenton. So, um, so yeah, when Wes asked me to be his best man, I thought it was pretty awesome. Um, I was out of me and Ethan and I'm the only one that's over 80 that can sign the thing anyway. So, I thought I was, I was sort of, yeah meant to be, uh, but yeah, the best man's sort of a, someone might say it's a bit of a confusing title, because, you know, if I'm the best man, then why should marry this guy? <laughs> I mean, man, it should be, it should be, Wes should be the best man, and I'm a pretty good man, and then Ethan's just another man. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I guess I'm going to tell you, I guess I'm going to tell you some stories about Wes. I've, I've known Wesley for as long as I can remember. And um, he used to tell me a lot of stories when I was younger. I used to tend to uh, tend to the wisdom of my older brother when I probably shouldn't have to have asked mum or dad or someone. But I remember I used to cause me many sleepless nights and nightmares about stories. Um, I don't know if it didn't grace me where we live. Uh, there seems to be a lot of geckos in the house. And they, they make this noise. They go... And um, you know, I'm lying in bed. I was probably about five years old. And I'm like, what is this noise? Oh, I've got a note, so I was thinking it might be a snake or something in, underneath my bed. So I'm like, Wesley, turn the whistle on, roll the whistle, and I said, Wes, what's the noise that you, know, the, that you hear at night time? And Wesley's like, oh, Michael, I'll tell you. <laughs> what it is, is you know the house, I'm like, yeah, the house, is like, you know, underneath the house, how there's them big brick pillars. We've got these big brick enclosed sort of areas holding the house up. Wesley's like, yeah, those. I'm like, oh, yeah, I know that. He's like, well, when they built the house, there was a girl up the top and she fell in. And, um, and they, couldn't, they couldn't get her out. And so they just built over the top of her. And, and the noise was actually her calling for her bird to help. Going... 
his long wide down in bed, instead of thinking it's a snake, it's the ghost of a girl that died in the house door for her to come and save her. So yeah, that helped me sleep the next few weeks until I decided to ask Mike what was going on. Tom told, told me it was a gecko. What better than a, a dead girl and living underneath my house? But um, and yeah, then there was another story, uh, trying to get the kids to sleep uh, on Christmas night is, is pretty hard, I, I could shoot. And um, so mum and dad used to send Wesley in to get me and Ethan to sleep. And you know, we'd all, we wouldn't want to go to bed, we wanted to wait up to see Santa. And Wesley's like, boys, you've got to go to sleep. If you don't sleep, he won't come. And we're like, oh, yeah, he'll come still. And was like, no, he won't, you've got to close your eyes, because if you don't, when he comes and you've got your eyes open, he'll pour sand in your eyes. <laughs> Sandy eyes, so we had to go to sleep. <laughs> I didn't want Santa coming in sprinkling sand, I wouldn't be able to see anything. So, <laughs> so yeah, um, yeah as, as Wesley mentioned before, Mum uh, cares for us boys like a lioness. You can't do anything wrong in Mum's eyes. Uh, one time, Wesley and his mate Chris were down the back and they were uh, throwing mud rocks on the back loaf's roof, on the lady's roof. And this big air conditioner system, brand spank a new one, smashing it with these rocks. And um, mum was out the front posing, and this lady come out, she's like, you boys, you can't be that. They're like, hey. So they run out, and mum's like, oh, this lady's like, oh, I'll go around and see Noreen. So this poor lady had had a stroke, and she was, she wasn't, she couldn't walk too good, so I got her out, she got out of the car, and she, she come over, and she's like, Noreen, your boys are out the back, and they're throwing rocks on my roof. My boys never did such a thing. They would never do anything like that. And so she turned around to Wesley and Chris, and she's like, boys, did you do that? Like, no, no, we didn't do that. <laughs> and I was like, get out of my yard. How dare you say something like that about my boys? Get out of the yard. And it wasn't until it was his 21st birthday when he built enough courage to tell them it was him and Chris. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so I remember one other time when we were um, driving down to Brisbane to stay with our only wind up. Thanks, Wanda, for all the trips to Brisbane. <laughs> Um, we pulled up at a uh, stop in Gippy. For, uh, we, needed, we needed to stop and go on the whole day and we needed something to eat and you know, we needed to go to the toilet and stuff. So we had it, got out, mum laid out all the nice picnic on the table, we got the thermos all there with cups of tea and sandwiches and everything. And Wesley decided to go to the toilet. And uh, so he's, he's in the toilet and he's sitting down and he's sort of, here's, here's this woman come in the toilet with her son. He's like, what is this stupid woman coming into the male's toilet floor with her son? Why wouldn't she just take him into the women's toilet? I mean, it doesn't matter, he's only about four years old. Why would you bother bringing him into the male when you're a woman? There could be anyone in the toilet. So this guy's going through Wesley's head, then he hears another woman come. He's like, what's she calling the sister or whatever for to come out? What's going on here? Bloody stupid woman. So he finished. Flushed the toilet and walked out and gave her a dirty look like, what are you doing in here? Yeah, it was warm, all right? And then, as Wesley walked out, he decided to get an female right on the side of the door. So Wesley's just running towards us like, fast forward, like, get in the car, get in the car! And we're like, we're trying to think. Mum's like, we never did anything. We're like, get in the car! We were in the sandwiches in the lake, got me a mum's cup of tea, just picked up the whole table, locked in the back of the car. He didn't say anything, we're in the middle of driving, and we're just like, what's going on? He's like, just put your heads down and go, go, go. And I'm like, what? He's like, we're just playing, we're cooking trouble with the police. We're like, what did you do? What did you do with us? He's like, don't worry, the police could be, we could be in trouble, yeah? And I'm like, oh. So yeah, we went until about halfway down the road, where I uh, tell us in the female's toilet, and uh, couldn't wait till the, uh, the newspaper for the next day, so a male teacher found her lurking in the women's toilet. <laughs> Yeah, um, yeah, as mentioned before as well, was this a, com a pretty competitive, uh, competitive fella. Uh, remember when we were um, only little, we used to play water bombs in the backyard, and we used to fill up buckets of water bombs, like two or three buckets, me and Ethan, like this is These really love water bombs, but for some reason, every time we played, me and Ethan never had our shirts on, and Wesley always had a shirt on, and you know, when you get hit with a water bomb without a shirt on, it stings, and we were only about seven, five years old. And uh, so Wesley, you know, filled all the bucks up. Well, this is awesome. Wesley gave me and Ethan two. He's like, that's, that's all you can carry. We're like, okay. So Wesley took three buckets down the back of the big board that he had. And me and Ethan are there with two water bombs. 
and we're like, what's going on? So, and then we get down close, Wesley just comes in, smashing us with his water bomb. We're like, oh, no. So we threw out one water bomb we had, Wesley caught the water bomb and threw it back, so we didn't end up with any. Oh, and I remember actually running for my life around the backyard, just like, I was actually like crying, I'm pretty sure, with pain. Wesley's just strong me in the back. I put him down to the ground and then he picked up an old one and I was like, oh, 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 when he used to play with Grandma, he used to play draughts, and he's never beaten Grandma ever at the game of draughts. And Mum used to say, oh, he used to get all upset about losing, and Mum was like, why don't you let him win? And Grandma's like, no, he's got to learn to lose. But he's never learned to lose. But, uh, yeah, I'd say one of the best wins that Wesley's ever had uh, is that girl sitting next to him over there. So, uh, well done, Wesley and Aaron, and congratulations. Well done, Nick. Might be a future Prime Minister, I think you could shut him up. <laughs> okay, guys, I'd just like to uh, call on the bride and groom to uh, toast both sets of parents. Thank you. to our parents, Ray and Noreen, Dan and Diane, words will never be enough to say how much, how blessed we are to have you as our parents, so thank you. You showed us that marriage takes love, understanding and at times hard work, but all of this is worth it, to have a person by your side who loves and supports you. Now Dad, I remember when I said I wanted to teach at Emerald, and you said, why well, do you want to go somewhere like that? Couldn't you just write them a letter and say you want to stay here? Well. Lucky for me and for you that I went because now you've successfully married off another daughter. <laughs> Everyone would know that planning a wedding can be quite a big task and planning it from Emerald has had its own set of challenges. Mum, you've helped with so much planning and preparation and you've always been there when I needed you. So now it's your turn to relax and enjoy the night. Ray and Noreen, thank you for welcoming me into your family as well. It's been great getting to know you and getting some inside knowledge on Wes. The stories you've shared with me have proven that he has always had a competitive streak. <laughs> While there's not a sheep station up for grabs, Wes, Dad has a cattle property that might be of interest. <laughs> Can everyone please raise your glass and toast to the parents? Anything else was going on around her. 
Well, Aaron Louise Rose, you now have the surname to match. <laughs> uh, in 2007, Aaron was transferred to Emerald, and it wasn't too long before we started to hear rumours of a reason her life. Uh, as many of you know, uh, I'm very keen on cattle, and we'll be great our efforts to keep uh, femininely fine joints uh, a part of the, the criteria. A lot more to do, but anyway. So when I heard Louise was attracted to Aaron's fine ankles, I thought this bloke's okay. <laughs> Uh, Aaron decided to bring Wes home, uh, finally to meet the family. And the first, uh, uh, he first met everyone at a dinner uh, in town uh, one weekend. Very long table, and he sat in the, in the middle of the table and it looked like he was watching a tennis game. He said, the sort of bottom well, backwards and forwards, uh, trying to keep up the conversation. <laughs> and uh, um, it went on around him from one end of the table to the other. He was, he was very quiet and seemed a bit shy, but we all sort of know he's really not like that. But soon, he soon made his presence felt. Uh, he's pushed our first son in law, Jason, uh, sideways and taken over the barbecue duties at home. At least the, the meat's cooked to perfection. Hey, Jason. Uh, his teaching skills too uh, have come in handy uh, as he coached me with uh, operating computers. I'm slowly becoming a real nerd, uh, but I always have Wes's phone number as a backup. <laughs> uh, our girls, including Erin, uh, were too impatient to get to teach me. I don't know where they got that. <laughs> Wes also sucks up to my wife big time. Uh, she. Uh, he thinks he's great and puts a lot of pressure on me to, uh, to be like, more like him. <laughs> Only problem is I, I can't sing or play a guitar. Uh, there must be more to him than that, I'm sure. Uh, I, I've been told he can be a real niggle on the tennis court and touch football. So he's not so perfect after all. Um, this one here is a true story. Um, one Sunday morning, he's followed me to West. Chris <laughs> followed me over to the shed uh, and bailed me up and, and asked me if Aaron's hand in marriage. Of course I said yes and then raced back to the house to tell everyone. Only trouble being that Chris hadn't told Aaron what he was up to. <laughs> After the commotion died down, a date was set resulting in us being here today. Uh, Diane, and I, Diane and I are very grateful to, to Ray and Maureen, to the level headed young man we now have as a son in law. Thank you. Thanks, Dan. Just um, lost a call on uh, Mr. Ray Rose. Been a bit of a tough year for the great man, but um, I think this is a uh, celebration that it's just about on the run home. Uh, it's about got it covered, mate. Just about, mate. Thanks, Ray. 
Folks, that uh, just about wraps up all the uh, toasts and speeches. Uh, I think we'll have probably a cutting of the cake and so it's best to get photos, make room to take photos of the cake cutting and then uh, the bridal waltz and then we'll probably get into a bit of uh, disco, I'd say. So. There's Blake the other hand here, he didn't want to uh, do a speech, but he's going to do a bit of a dance number on the floor for us, I think. <laughs> no, so if there's anybody else has got anything to say or add anything, feel free to come up. If not, I'll go in with that uh, Parramatta Eel song. <laughs> no, I wouldn't do that. Actually, you know, we've got, we've got another... Uh, anyway, it's been an absolute pleasure and honour to uh, be the chairman for the first time. I hope I did okay. But yes, yeah, it's been a big honour. Very proud to do it. Thanks, Liz and Aaron. Pass on to, uh, to the good looking brother now. Yeah? <laughs> Thanks, Peter. Peter. To be the chairman of somebody's wedding is the greatest honour. And thank you, Peter, very much. You did a wonderful job. <laughs> Peter came to live with me a couple of years ago. And we used to sit around the wood stove that Ray gave me, ever so grateful to him. And my mate John used to say, I'm tired. I'd say, pleased to meet you, I'm Tom. And Peter would say, I'm Jesus Christ. <laughs> this went on for weeks and weeks and weeks. Peter thought he was Jesus Christ. So one Saturday morning, I said to John, we'll go with Peter because he's going to prove to us that he's Jesus Christ. <laughs> so we write our bets out, goes to the Glenmore Tavern, walk into the tavern, and the barman said, Jesus Christ, it's you again. <laughs> <laughs> Wesley, Ethan, and Michael, Maureen and Ray had some great trips away. One year we went to Kenya Gorge, packed our morning tea, walked up to this big canyon. There's about 30 or 40 people there. And I said to Noreen, thank goodness we're going to have morning tea on our own. She said, what do you mean? There's 30 or 40 people here. <laughs> I said, when do you start screaming at these boys, we'll have this canyon to ourselves. <laughs> Within two minutes, everybody had disappeared. <laughs> On another trip to Kenny and George, John was always the cook. So we had the fire absolutely perfect this afternoon. And John said to Ray, don't dare stoke that fire up. I'm going to cook them for the kids and potatoes in their jackets. So with that, Noreen and I and John and whoever went to the showers and had a shower, we walked out of the shower block the first thing Noreen and I saw was 10 foot flame <laughs> over the campsite. Ray had stoked the fire up. <laughs> there was that much burnt damper and burnt potatoes in their jacket that Kenny and Gordon could smell of smoke and flames for months after. <laughs> These three boys, my nephews, Noreen and Ray, it's been an honour to talk tonight. Erin, welcome to the family. I know your family is a wonderful family. I sense that at the church today. But Erin, you've also married into a wonderful family. Thanks very much. Well done, Willow. Uh, yeah, so that draws a close to the uh, speeches and toasts. So, Whereas well, I think we're the cake, cutting on the cakes next. Yeah, so. Uh, we might have another speech at the back. Hello, we might have another. One more speech. <laughs> uh, for those who don't know, my name is Regan. Uh, Wes moved into Emerald. Uh, 
especially your taking out some good then emerald as well inside of my taking career there as well. And um, we'd had many parties there and Wes would come home and grab out the guitar and play a couple of songs. We'd all sing along and off we go wandering home. I just lived just down the road from Wes and the wonder was really the walk home. And um, there was one night we came home from a phone party and um, Wes had a uh, a great little song that he nicknamed uh, the phone party girl and we all sang along and, <laughs> and don't worry it's got nothing to do with any girl at all like that. She slipped over in the phone and fell over and Wes laughed at her and she hopped up and looked around and made sure no one was looking at her and, and she just went on her way and Wes started singing a song about her and all of a sudden phone party girl was a, a big hit every time he went home. Wes, you played that number one, you know, the phone party girl. Not you go and start singing the phone party girl song. So. Maybe later on we can hear a um, reference of that, mate. Right? <laughs> <laughs> well, hey, uh, my name's Pat. I actually lived with Wes for the last three years. Um, <laughs> yeah, the mammal comes with you. Right, uh, uh, yeah, so it's been a wonderful time living with Wes. I uh, came into everyone not knowing what to expect. I walked into this house. I got brought in by these two blokes. And, I opened up the door and I walked in this house and I, I found these two little motorbikes which are about kind of so big and, and I thought, oh, what have I got myself into? And I, I kind of went for a look around the house and I found a bag of different stuff that we don't really talk about. And we, kept, we kept going through the house and um, I, where's the door was open? So I, you know, just strolled on in. I found this picture of these two AFL players. It was the two boys. And uh, I saw the brothers' jerseys and thought, bloody hell, I've got to get out of here. I, so we're all mates, both the brothers, and the worst people I know. So I thought I was, in, I was in a bit of trouble here, but uh, it wasn't until I actually met Wes where I thought that these bikes that were this high were, um, you know, just little pocket bikes, but I didn't realise they were life size. So it was, um, it was, uh, it was a bit of a shock, but I, uh, the first thing I got told about Wes was when I walked in, the guy said, you know, you'll love him, what are you into? And I said, oh, I love sport and I love to drink. And, and if I've got any money from drinking, I'll put it on the, you know, horses or pokies, I love pokies, but, you know, play them. And, and they said, well, this guy spends all his afternoons and, on Saturdays at the pub, and, and you know, and I thought, oh, I'm in heaven here, this is fantastic. But um, got to know Wes, he was wonderful. He really, um, on a serious note, took me under his wing a bit and, and introduced me to a lot of people, really included me, and that kind of made my time in Emerald absolutely fantastic. But I remember this night, we went to the Valentine's Day Ball, and, and uh, it was, a, it was a fantastic night. I, I don't even remember much. I remember having a swan down the back there falling over and bruising myself. And, and um, I remember, you know, Wes, Wes and I were out the front. I couldn't speak or walk. I was struggling. And, and, but Wes, nothing but the gentleman, was getting these four girls in the car. And at, at this time, Wes was the male PE teacher at, at St. Pat's under the tutelage of Max Martin over here. And, and uh, Wes was the ultimate gentleman. And... Uh, put these four girls in the car and thought, you bastard, you could put me in first and I'd be able to die. He put, he put them in and, and you know, that was lovely, but good bloke, you don't want to learn. But, uh, you know, he put, put them in and he turned to me and he said, mate, they love me. <laughs> Which one? They all love me. And I said, you know, I'm pretty sure this is right. I can't remember much, but I'm pretty sure I said, go Aaron. And I think to this, to this day, I think it was a, uh, a wonderful choice. Getting, uh, getting to know her. The funny thing about that story is the other three weren't interested at all. I think Wes was just getting up. But, um, the, uh, the, thing, the thing was, I got to know her over the time, and she is honestly one of the most amazing girls, and, and um, she was awesome to kind of not live with, but live with in a way. And, and so I have her, have her there and have her important things. And, and she learned a lot from Wes, things like, you know, how to, how to wash up where you, you wash up and then there's that bit of water where you have to, have to rinse the things and then put them in the, in the box. And, you know, there was all these different things, how to mop the floor properly, how to mow grass and then mow again. I swear, Wes would mow dirt if you got the chance, he loves it. But, um, she, uh, she's learned a lot from Wes and how to use it. They bought this turbo oven, which was on sale at Harvey Norman, one of the best investments they've got, other, other than the rings, it's right up there. So they spent, spent a lot of money on it. And, the thing's called pizzas about 4.87, it's, it's wonderful, but, but there's only a certain way that you can press the buttons, and Wes knows that way, and uh, so he, he's taught us all, which is wonderful, but um, 
at the end of the day, I think the biggest thing that Wes has got from Aaron is how to be the best bloke he can be. And he's a wonderful bloke, but he really, you know, just knowing Wes for the last few years, two years, he's actually come along leaps and bounds with Aaron there. So he's a wonderful guy, he's a wonderful teacher, and so is she. They're absolutely wonderful together. And best of luck and best of future. Um, it's just beginning, I think there's uh, four fun games to be had, so uh, everybody, enjoy yourselves, enjoy this wonderful occasion, enjoy it.